All right, time for our exam five stuff. So for exam five, it's just going to be chapter 15 and chapter 16. And all of this is still on nervous system material. So we're just continuing what we started in the last section. So chapter 15 is all about the autonomic nervous system. So we're going to compare the autonomic nervous system versus our somatic one. Look at our two divisions of them and look at our different pathways. So a big part of our autonomic nervous system is reflexes. So there's going to be a stimulus and there's going to be a receptor that detects the stimulus. That stimulus is sent on a afferent sensory neuron to a integrating center at the level of the brain stem or spinal cord. So in here, there may be a interneuron that connects different areas and allows for the communication to transfer to our efferent motor neuron where a command is giving out to an effector that's going to give a response. So sometimes it's a muscle, sometimes it could be a gland to secrete out their product. For the autonomic, correction, sorry. So with our normal reflexes, such as, okay, try again. Okay, so this section we're focusing still on autonomic, uh, on autonomic nervous system. So it's a part of our visceral reflexes. So earlier we covered just regular reflexes, such as when a doctor hits your knee with a hammer and then you move your knee away and do that little kick in order to move your knee away from the unpleasant stimulus. Well, the autonomic nervous system is part of your visceral reflexes. So dealing with your internal organs. So that's why sometimes during certain situations where you have a response to a stimulus or response to a situation where, for example, like you feel like you got butterflies in your stomach. So you have response of certain reflexes that happen within your organs and causing um, an effect on other parts of your body. So again, for our reflexes, it's automatic. And for our visceral ones, they're unconscious. So again, we don't have a brain control over these reflexes. So uh, stimulation involves visceral receptors and effectors. So going back to our reflex arc, since we just had a review, again, you're going to have a receptor that's going to detect the stimuli, the afferent neuron, send it to the central nervous system. The integrating center is our central nervous system. The efferent neurons are going to carry the signal away from our central nervous system to the effector that's going to carry out the response. So for the autonomic nervous system, it's part of the efferent motor pathway. So just that section from the central nervous system out to the effector, and it is a involuntary response to the stimulation. So an example of this is the barrel reflex. So dealing with our pressure, so like a barometer for a weather reading. So we have receptors in, what? well, this one is showing for the internal carotid artery. There's also another one in your aorta, but they're going to sense the stimulus of changes in pressure. So the reason why your blood pressure is very important is because you need to make sure that your blood pressure is high enough so that you're able to exchange nutrients and waste with your tissues, but you also don't want to be too high where you cause your blood vessels to um, have damage. So those receptors are going to sense and monitor your blood pressure. We have our afferent sensory neuron that's going to take it to our integrating center in the central nervous system, specifically in our brainstem region. 
So dealing with the hearts, you definitely don't want to have to use part of your higher order brain. You want to do as much basic as possible. So we're going to stick to the brain stem. So with the integrating center in the brain stem, there is one tiny little interneuron that is going to send the information on our efferent motor neuron. So here is our autonomic autonomic reflex or autonomic nervous system section on the motor side and you're going to send the signal to in this case the effector is your pacemaker cell so these are the ones that get your heart to pump so start off that signal and it passes off that signal and in this case our second neuron to receive the information is a very short one so later we'll talk about why you have in some parts of it where there's a long starter neuron and a really short one or a really short starter neuron and then a longer one to get to our infector. So in this case, we have a increase in blood pressure. So we have too much. So we send the signal to our integrating center to tell, basically tell the pacemaker to slow down. We don't need so much blood pumping through our blood vessels and pushing against the blood vessel walls because you don't need the damage. Okay, so remember this from earlier chapter. So our autonomic nervous system is a part of our peripheral nervous system. So we're going away from the central nervous system. It's part of our visceral motor division. And there's two sections. We have the sympathetic division and the parasympathetic divisions. So sometimes they work together. So they have a cooperative effect. Or sometimes they work in opposite direction of each other, which are contrasting effects. So let's focus on the first one. The sympathetic division, this is going to prepare the body for physical activity. So I'm going to skip down here first. So this is also nicknamed your fight or flight uh, nervous system. So this gets your body ready for some kind of action. So you got to make sure your muscles got what they need. We're focusing all of our energy in order to fight something, run away from something. And then there's also something we've just added uh, recently, freeze, because some people do just freeze up in a stressful situation. So to make sure that our body's ready for action, heart rate increases. So making sure we get that blood flowing, blood pressure increases so that you're making sure you get those nutrients to the tissues, especially your muscles, increase in airflow, so making sure you're getting in good oxygen so that you can deliver, deliver it to your muscles. Increase in blood glucose levels. So let's break down that stored energy we have. Let's get it to the muscles so that they have the energy, which we've already covered, um, in order to make ATP and therefore have the muscle contractions to run away or fight. In other ways, it reduces blood flow to the skin just in case you get hurt in a fight and you don't end up bleeding all over the place. It also decreases your urinary and digestive tract. So both of those are helping to get rid of waste in the body. So you don't need to be, for example, running away from a bear and like, oh crap, I gotta pee. Uh, no, mm -mm. we're gonna stop that. Let's focus on getting away from the bear and then you can do all the other stuff. The other division is the parasympathetic division. This does the opposite effect. So it's going to calm the body down, helps reduce our energy uses. So expenditure, that's what that is, use of something, um, and helps with our body maintenance. So making sure we're prepared for the next time when we do need to actually be in act action. We have stored glucose, our body is healed up, you're ready to go. So the effects that it has on your body are to essentially do a lot of the opposite of what happens in the sympathetic division. So decrease your heartbreak. That's going to calm you down. Decrease your blood pressure. Decrease your airflow. And airflow and your heart rate are tied to each other. So when one calms or one slows down, the other one slows down and vice versa. When one speeds up, the other one does. So both of those are going to get affected. Um, decrease your blood glucose levels. Why? Because you don't need glucose to be feeding your tissues. We want to work on storing those uh, glucose in, into glycogen. And in this one, we are increasing blood flow to the urinary and digestive system. So focusing on getting rid of waste as well as digesting food so that we are breaking it down and storing what we have gotten from our food. So in this one, this is called our rest and digest system. 
So with both of these systems, they're actually active at the same time. So we have what's called our autonomic tome, where it's a balance between the two, where the parasympathetic division is helping our body stay calm. Um, so this is going to, for example, maintain muscle tone in the intestines as you are digesting and breaking down your food. Most of that actually happens in your small intestines, not in your stomach. So making sure that you're still able to have the activity there. It keeps your resting heart rate down to about 70 to 80 beats per minute. So if we let those little pacemaker cells go as fast as they want to go, just as their normal pattern of how they would do it, you're going to learn that in AP2. It actually has a normal trigger that that's why it's always going to trigger your heart rate. So it does it independently of your central nervous system. So if we just let them suckers go, our resting heart rate would be about 100 beats per minute, which is what happens as you are, for example, like walking around. So you don't need that much energy when you're sitting on your butt. The other one, your sympathetic tone. So keeping your body ready for action. So for example, maintaining your blood pressure, maintaining that you have enough of pressure to push nutrients from your blood and push them across the capillary and into your tissues. So most of your divisions are going to have an opposite effect on each other. There's a few places where it actually has the exact same. So one just works on one part of a section and one works on the other. Okay, so we have in the autonomic nervous system, we have central and peripheral parts to it. So uh, remembering I was talking about your two neurons, one is longer than the other, whether it's the starter one or the one that's actually going to your effector. So inside of our central nervous system, either in the brainstem region or in our vertebra is where you're going to have the start of your first neuron. So it's going to start off either in your brainstem region or in your spinal cord, so the main cell body. And then in going to your location, the passing off of our communication baton happens in a what's called a peripheral ganglia. So it's either going to be close by our spinal cord, so that's the short starter ones, and then you have a longer one getting all the way to your effector. Or sometimes this right here, these passing off of the baton to the second neuron happens a little bit closer to your actual effector. So we have our exiting out of our central nervous system for nerve number one or neuron number one. And then neuron number two actually goes to our target. Okay, so let's compare our different pathways leaving the central nervous system and going to a target. So, for example, let's uh, want, say I want to contract a muscle, cause some kind of movement. So, up top we have a somatic motor neuron. So, we have a main cell body in our brain stem. We exit out and they're going towards the anterior portion because we're actually doing something. So, our motor section going out our anterior or front portion, and then using a myelinated fiber, so very fast, because we got to get that message to the muscle so we can tell it to contract, using acetylcholine as our neurotransmitter to target the muscle. However, down here, sympathetic division versus, uh-oh, can't see that, parasympathetic division. Let's back this up. Okay, so for our... Sympathetic division, it has two neurons, just with same thing with our parasympathetic division having two neurons. For our sympathetic division, it has our, let me go back. So with our two neurons, they have a, another term called preganglionic or postganglionic. So are they before or after you have our baton pass for sending the communication? So in our sympathetic division, we have a short preganglionic fiber, which is myelinated. So go ahead and get that message out. We have our passing of the baton communication using acetylcholine. And then our postganglionic fiber, our neuron number two, going from our ganglion 
and all the way to the effector. So this one's going to be a whole lot longer. However, in our parasympathetic division, our rest and digest division, so again, starting in our gray matter of the spinal cord, going out the anterior section, and then we have a long preganglionic neuron. The ganglion for our parasympathetic division is either near or actually in the target organ. So in this example, targeting the heart, the ganglion is actually inside the heart. So we have long, preganglionic, very short, postganglionic. So again, passing off that acetylcholine, target the next one. And then we have our um, short postganglionic to target those pacemaker cells. Granted, this actually should be a little bit higher because that's where the pacemaker cells are, but they're just trying to get space in. Oh, well. Okay. So this is the text version of what I just talked about. Your somatic pathway versus your two autonomic pathways. So showing your preganglionic versus po postganglionic, where they start, where are they going to, and whether or not they're myelinated or not. Okay, next section, focusing on our actual specific parts on those pathways, looking at how glands can help, as well as one more additional nervous system. It just has its own special naming because it focuses just on the digestive tract, so... It got its own name. Most likely we discovered it and gave it a name and then realized that it also works with our sympathetic and parasympathetic divisions because it gets affected by it. So whatever, it still has its own naming system. Okay, let's start with our sympathetic division, fight or flight. So getting ready to have some action in the body. change my mind. We're actually going to start a new video because I realize I'm at 17 minutes and the next section really all needs to be together. So I'll see you on the next one.